good afternoon and salam alaikum welcome to uh, bounce check webinar bismillahir rahmanir rahim uh, uh, pakistan business council pakistan business profession council uh, took this hot topic of bounce check or you can say return check or you can say this owner check uh, this is a uh, very important topic in the market and for the benefit of the issuer uh, the council together with american chamber of uh, american chamber and cham canadian business council and of course in the top is abu dhabi chamber of commerce or we plan to this webinar for the benefit to for all the business community and the community because this is the check is since the person arrives here in united arab emirates they are bound to open a bank account and then they bound to issue checks the checks normally which has been used and to the benefit to the financial transaction especially when he arrives here he first rent his or uh, office or residence he come across to that then if he uh, buy a car he has to issue the check when he gets receive the credit card he has to issue checks when he borrow uh, amount then he has to issue check and in these all circumstances he issues the check but whether the fund will be there when this is presented because these are checks as used as a security so when these checks comes in time because of he has already issued some time they are not been honored or returned for that reason we all thought to benefit because there was a uh, law earlier uh, when very drastic law was there that if you report the check it will go to the if you dishonor the check it go to the police public prosecution criminal court or civil court very severe and sometimes the business is uh, closes on that account sometimes the businessman leaves the country sometimes it's a uh, company closes it becomes a chaos in the whole business circle and it's happening also so for this uh, we have uh, a great speaker and the program will be addressed by mr umar kudair he is a qualified lawyer from egypt and he has obtained his llm degree from robert h mckinney school uh, and then mr badru zama he is a leading banker uh, worked for abu dhabi islamic bank uh, for decades and uh, have a, a large experience for many years especially on the financial transaction and related to the checks then the famous zia saloon all you know i don't have to introduce uh, he is there to also to have his opinion on on this so from this uh, uh the program is this that mr umar kudair will uh, give his opinion about the existing laws and the future laws mr badru zama will uh, provide you about the transaction how central bank uh, rules regulation on the subject of of uh, bounce checks and then uh mr jas salum will have the comments and i will again conclude the whole thing with that we are inviting the umar kudur from tamimi company and he will address to uh, on the subject umar works closely with other tamimi department on litigation aspect that cross with other specialized department including employment arbitration real estate and tmt financial crime so he has a series of experience uh, he has uh, done a lot of uh, investigation on this subject he has um, got an experience and sure it will be good education for everyone 
Over to Mr. Omar Kode. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser, for the introduction. Uh, just to kickstart, uh, uh, to give an overview, we have around 13 pieces of legislation, which provides for obviously many rules governing the check. So when the topic of check uh, comes from a client, we don't just open one book or uh, one code of law. Uh, it depends on the circumstances to assess what is applicable. Uh, 13 legislation is a lot. Uh, just for, uh, by way of example, you have the criminal law, you have the commercial law, you have the laws on payment orders and their application as set uh, by decisions issued by public prosecution offices. Uh, you have the criminal procedures law and uh, circulars that are issued from the central bank. Uh, you have the bankruptcy law as well, which uh, uh, address the situation when there is a bounce check, at the same time there is a bankruptcy process. Um, Obviously, we cannot cover all of this bit by bit, but that's the general overview. But to give more insight, uh, let's start with more basics as uh, defining a check. So a check is basically an instrument or uh, a commercial paper that has an order from the issuer to pay a specific amount on a specific date, which is the due date on the check, uh, to be paid to the beneficiary. Uh, the courts in UAE, they took the approach uh, to deem uh, the check as good as cash, uh, meaning that if I hand you a check, this is as if I'm handing you cash in your hands. Now, the practicality and for commercial transactions uh, in particular, uh, the dealing of checks is not like that because everyone rely on the fact that it's post-dated, it can be paid on a specific date later on so I can manage the money, I can withdraw. But this is when the problems arises um, uh, and the check bounces. If we're talking, of course, that uh, the issuer was acting in good faith, but he only faced problems uh, along the way uh, for liquidity or not having enough uh, funds in his bank account. <clears throat> there are other uh, more uh, serious uh, actions by the issuers when it comes more uh, deliberate, uh, that he forges a check or he manipulates uh, when, uh, his handwriting when uh, signing the check so it doesn't match with the bank records so it doesn't get cashed and the, due to those practicalities uh, uh, and that the check can be cashed at a later date uh, there is an increased risk and hence there is an increased protection of uh, the bank checks uh, under different legislations um, and depending on the circumstances where you issue the check, so if you issue the security check for a bank, or if you issue the check for paying an installment for purchasing a property, real estate uh, asset, uh, or you issue the check for uh, um, uh, rent, uh, there could be differences in the application, a check bounces in those situations. So when we go to the police, for example, to file a criminal case uh, for a bounce check, uh, the police asks us uh, what is the reason for issuing that check? Because it can make a difference uh, slightly. Uh, that's why the assessment of the circumstances is quite important. Uh, the main article uh, that governs the criminal conduct of uh, issuing a bounce check is Article 401 of the criminal law. And that was in the past the main uh, provision that everyone uh, is scared of. Uh, it sets out a penalty of a fine and a risk of imprisonment. Uh, whoever issued uh, a check uh, that doesn't that gets dishonored later on. Following that, uh, there was a series of amendments to different legislations which changed the, that application a little bit. Uh, so you have uh, laws that were issued uh, and starting with Dubai uh, to uh, introduce a new mechanism called the penal order. Uh, 
Uh, the penal order is basically um, a, an empowerment to the public prosecution to uh, impose a fine on uh, whoever issued a check uh, that gets dishonored. But it's only a fine, say for limited exceptions, it's only a fine. And the fine varies uh, depending on the value of the check. So if the check is 50,000 or less, the fine is 2,000 dirhams. If the value of the check is between 50,000 and 100,000, the uh, fine is 5,000 dirhams. Uh, up to 200,000, the fine is 10,000. If you exceed the 200,000, the value of the check is above 200,000, then Article 401 would apply and then the issuer might uh, face the risk of imprisonment. Uh, now, in 2020, uh, a new federal decree by law was issued to amend the commercial transactions law, uh, which is still to be enforced and applied in Jan 2022. So we're talking next year. Uh, the amendment had uh, introduced several changes, but I will only tackle the most significant one, is that Article 401 of the criminal law was revoked, uh, cancelled. Uh, the one that I just mentioned that has the penalty of fine or imprisonment. So this no longer would be applicable on uh, bounce checks, which is, uh, I can say, a historical uh, um, amendment because this was the main article governing checks. And uh, consequently, the laws that were issued for the penal order um, are not to be applied as well, although the amendment does not state that specifically, uh, but it does state that any uh, provision or law that is contrary to this amendment would be revoked. And this applies to the uh, laws governing penal order. Um, the amendment made uh, a grading of penalties depending on how serious the action of the issuer were. So uh, just for an example, um, if the issuer issued a check and then later on it bounces just because there wasn't sufficient funds, there would be a penalty imposed on the issuer, uh, a minimum of 1,000 dirham, up to 10% of the value of the check. Now, going a, a little higher for more severe actions, if the issuer deliberately uh, signed the check in a manner that prevents its encashment, so he uh, makes a different signature than the one uh, registered with the bank, and it gets bounced for that reason, the fine is a minimum of uh, 5,000 dirhams up to 10% of the value of the check. Going more extreme, if the issuer forged the check, he fabricated and he created the check, or he didn't do that, but um, he handed the check while he knew it was forged by someone else, or uh, uh, committed some sort of action in relation to that check that is connected to uh, fraud, which is a separate criminal offense, uh, the fine would be uh, more severe. It would be a minimum of 20,000 dirhams up to 100,000 uh, dirhams. Now, this does not uh, prevent from applying different penalties for different crimes like uh, forgery or fraud. That's something separate. Uh, but mainly those are the main significant changes. There are other provisions that talks about uh, Penalties that could apply could be applied when uh, the bank refuses uh, committing to the order or the uh, uh, obligation of encashing the checks. Now, um, the third uh, significant change is that uh, the amendment considered a bounce check as an instrument as a, on its own that you can enforce it before the court to retrieve the funds from the uh, issuer uh, instead of 
filing a civil uh, normal case that involves uh, extensive uh, submissions between the parties and rebuttals of uh, and uh, putting forward arguments on the merits. Uh, it's more straightforward now that you can enforce uh, the check to uh, retrieve the funds. Now, uh, generally, uh, until 2022 uh, comes and we see the new practice and how this will come into real life, uh, the practice right now, if uh, a check bounces, we go and file a police complaint. That's the standard uh, route and the recommended one. Uh, the police communicates with the bank to get some details like the Emirates ID of the issuer and the other uh, details. Once the bank responds, uh, the criminal case is registered uh, against the issuer. And by issuer, I mean the one who uh, signed the check himself. And an arrest order would be uh, issued against him, except in certain cases. And uh, a travel ban would be placed against his name so he would be arrested when entering or exiting the UAE. Uh, this is the normal uh, situation. And then it gets referred to the prosecution. And if it's less than 200, then fines would be applied. If it's more than 200,000, uh, the matter would be referred to the criminal courts to consider whether they would impose a penalty of imprisonment or not. Uh, that's in a nutshell the procedures for uh, filing the criminal case. You have different types of checks. Uh, you have uh, um, a manager's check. The manager's check is basically the most secure one uh, where the bank has an obligation to set aside the value or the amount of that check. So the beneficiary, once he receives a manager check, he is 100% certain that he would get the amount. Uh, and he would not face the risk of insufficient funds, for example. Um, you have blank checks when uh, the uh, check is just signed by the issuer, but there are complications with that. And circulars from the central bank were issued uh, a few years back to prevent this. Uh, otherwise, it could be deemed null and void. Uh, you have the security check which everyone, almost everyone uh, uh, issued one before, like the one you issued to the bank for credit cards or loans. Uh, it's a security check for the full amount. Um, in the past, the courts made a differentiation between security checks and normal checks for installments or a specific payment. Uh, but uh, generally, I can say this is no longer the case for a uh, few years now, uh, a check is a check and uh, there is basis for criminal liability. That's uh, an overview. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for your uh, input. And um, yes, you identified very important and challenging situation. And uh, especially uh, the new law for 2022, 20, where an independent uh, Department will be there, or independent court will be there who can immediately tackle uh, the check then and there and make a decision because uh, uh, this of uh, bounce check, I think <laughs> the government department and the police station, they have numerous work. I think major work they uh, receive uh, and complain receive on these checks. And there are a lot of time has been spent uh, of uh, the police station on attending uh, attending this. And I think 2022, if this has come and if the independent court is there to tackle the return and dishonor check, which is a good move. And I think it's a benefit to the issuer and the receiver both. Uh, I really thank you, Mario, nicely expressed 
the existing law and the future coming law. Now I'm inviting Mr. Badu Zama, who is the Vice President Legal of uh, Pakistan Business Professional Council. As I said, he has a long experience with Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank, and he is having his own consultancy on, on providing service to the local banks and international banks for their procedure and system. Uh, he's a very learned on that. He's uh, our VP legal, as I said. Over, over to Mr. Badu Zama. Uh, thank you, Dr. Faisal Anis, and thank you, Umar, for a legal brief about um, post-dated checks. As Dr. Spencer said in the beginning, I will be covering in my presentation, the various uh, regulations issued by the central bank and how they are being implemented in the financial industry by central bank and other banks. Uh, just to give a definition of bounce checks normally, as per law, which Umar has also briefly explained, a bounce check is a check presented by the payee and rejected by the Troy Bank, the bank on which the check is drawn. When the bank indicates that the fund available in the account of the drawer at the date of issuance are insufficient to cover the amount mentioned on the check, either partially or fully, the check is consequently rejected and marked by the bank. The bank receives an order from the issuer to refrain from paying the check. The draw makes or signs check in a manner that prevent it from being paid by committing or changing the signature. The draw's bank's account was closed before the issued check is presented for the payment. To go further, uh, Omar has mentioned 13 legislations uh, addressing the issue in their but these three are actually the main laws which address the issue, which is number one is the law number three of 1987. As, as Umar mentioned, the article 401 is the relevant article. And as Umar mentioned that it's, it's going to be uh, waived off uh, after this new law of 2020. So under this uh, article, there was penalty of imprisonment and fines. Then we, have one another major law, which is Federal Law Number 18 of 1993, issued issuing the commercial transactions. All these subjects which I mentioned here are the chapters of this law. This law talks in detail about issuing of checks, negotiation of checks. The more important chapters are payment of checks and refrainment from payment for the subject of today, which partly Mr. Omar has covered. Then we have law number 14 of 2020, amending some of the provision of commercial law, which Ms. Somer has mentioned. Uh, so what option pay has against a bounce check? If a check is bounced, I've seen some questions coming on that. So when a check is deemed bounced, failure to pay may be established by a statement from the bank. The bank cannot refuse a request to issue such a statement, but may request a grace period not exceeding three working days following the presentment of the check. So bank is allowed to take three days either to go back to the customer issuer or resolve the issue. So what are the options? As we have heard from Umar also, police complaint, public prosecution, criminal court, civil case proceeding. And at the same time, these are the consequences for the issuer. So he may face all these proceedings when the check is bounced. Coming to the main point of central bank regulations, we heard about the laws. Central bank role is to issue regulations for implementations of the law in a way that law is effectively implemented in the country. 
So in the same year of 1993, when the law number 18 of 1993 was issued, Central Bank issued this circular, and they named this circular Return Unpaid Checks, Current Accounts, Saving and Call Accounts. In this circular, Central Bank described the situations of return and paid checks, current saving and call accounts, and on another account, time deposits accounts can be opened by the banks. And also, Central Bank mentioned that which type of customer can open which type of accounts. In the very beginning of this circular, Central Bank said to reduce the number of return and paid checks and show better discipline among banks' customers and to enhance the standing of checks as payment instrument in the country. Then there are some clauses. Um, I will describe some of the major clauses. Uh, number one is issuance of checkbook is prohibited for non-residence account holder. So non-resident, you know, a person who has no UA residence, is not living here, he can open account, but he's not allowed to open a current account with checkbook. He is, he is only allowed to open a saving account or time deposit account, and banks are not allowed to issue checkbook to him. Those customers account holders whom at least four checks get returned and paid for insufficient one, with a maximum time span between the first and fourth check of one year, their current account must be closes. So this is what the central bank is structured to the banks. The remaining checks collected and the name reported to the central bank's risk bureau along with the amount of each return check. And banks have the discretion to waive the counting of any return checks if they are convinced that such check was returned in good faith. So they, they left this to the banks because banks know their customer better. If they feel that a check has been returned in good faith and cause their customer forgot to bring the balance or when bank inform the customer, customer deposit the amount, then they can skip the uh, bouncing of the check incident and, and skip the counting also. Then going to some other clauses, the central bank will use the information sent by all banks to compile a list of current account restricted person, which will be made available to all participating banks respectively. Now this list has been merged with the Alitaha Credit Bureau list. Bank must give formal warning to their customer each time when their checks get returned and paid. And banks are doing this in, in many cases. Banks returning checks unpaid must be attached a slip on each check and tick the right reason for returning the check unpaid. So banks were used to issue a, 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 a slip where many reasons are mentioned and they're used to take one reason and give to the beneficiary or presenter of the check. Banks must not leak any information they get through access to the central bank system. So they have to keep confident, information confidential. So once the current account of a customer is closed for financial reason, mainly because of the bounce checks, the bank can consider reopening the account after a period of one year. And what happened that in subsequent notice of 2003, bank extended this period to two years and in case of repetition to three years. So this is the main circular of 14 of 93 and its main clauses about this subject. Then in 2003, Central Bank issued another circular on the same subject. And the title was procedures adopted by the Central Bank to reduce the ratio of return and paid checks. So central bank, when issuing these regulations, they are keeping this objective that they have to reduce the number of return and paid checks. So what they said to the banks, the reasons for returning a check shall be confined to the following. So they gave only four reasons which their slip should mention. Insufficient balance, incompatible signature or existence of an official, closure or freezing or attachment of the account. Sometimes court sent an order and freeze the account so they can mention that reason or any other reason to be mentioned. So whatever they are saying, other reason, it should be clearly mentioned. And they ask banks to stop giving this reason that refer to draw. The banks are not using this anymore. Giving the beneficiary option 
of encashing the amount available in the account and to provide with a certificate. And central bank has given a format of that certificate also with the notice and central bank issued this clause in this regulation according to the article 617 of law number 18 of 1993 that drawee can avail the available balance and get a certificate from the bank. But in this case, partial payment of the check will deny the right to use the check at police department to prosecute the drawer and partially paid check shall not be considered as return check. Then central bank also advised that checks of value of 1 million or above should be certified by a bank. A beneficiary's acceptance of such check will be on his own responsibility. So if beneficiary is asking to get the check certified with the bank, so what bank does? Bank asked the drawer to block the fund in his account for this amount or bank give credit to the customer and it has become more secure check. Then, you agree. You agree. Then in 2018, uh, three years back, Central Bank another issued uh, under the regulation. The title was Circular Number 14 of 93, which is the main circular regarding return and paid check, current account, saving account, call account. So they issued some other reg regulation in this circular. Uh, some of those classes are that banks must carry out Ali Tahat credit bureau checks to ensure that credit worthiness of the customer before issuing checkbook. So since the Tahat credit bureau was operative, so now bank, uh, central bank asked them to check it before issuing checkbook. For central bank further said that for any new banking relationship, after the date of this notice, banks shall issue a checkbook containing a maximum of 10 individual checks leads to the customer only. So 10 leads are very small number issued in a checkbook and uh, banks have business entities who issue checks because uh, they issue checks to their suppliers and all things. So some of the banks went back to the central bank. They said that if we are established in new relationship. So it will be difficult to issue only one checkbook of 10 leaves. So central bank came back with a clarification that if customer is living or having presence in UAE for a long time and having good record of not bounce checks and providing statement of accounts of other banks where the customer is maintaining account, then they can issue checkbook of more leads. Then it says that after a period of six months and providing no checks are returned or unpaid, further checkbook may be issued as per the approved procedure. So banks have options to issue as many book checks books. Normally they are issuing 25 leads checkbooks and according to the customer need and also according to the uh, bank's evaluation of the customer. Banks are encouraged to advise their customers to consider using electronic payment methods such as direct debit and bank transfers where possible. Good thing is that every bank has terms and conditions. Which bank asks customers to sign at the time of establishing relationship? So most of these requirements bank have incorporated in those terms and conditions also. And there is a general uh, notification to the customers by the banks that uh, now they have put these terms and conditions on their website. So whenever they update, they send an SMS message or email to, th to the customer, they have, they have updated the terms and con conditions and customer can go, go back to the website of the bank and read terms and conditions. Lastly, also banks should advise the customer that any non-executed payment instruction, including return checks will be reflected in the Ali Tahat credit bureau report, which will negatively affect the credibility of the customer. And banks have included this actually in the terms and conditions. So these are the main regulations. And uh, now we'll talk about the image check clearing system. What happened that in, nine, in 2008, 
Central Bank has introduced electronic clearing system. Central Bank was working on this system for one and a half years uh, to comply with the requirements of the system. And, the, and Central Bank made all the banks comply with this. For some time, it was a pilot test. Finally, from 1st July 2008, it went into life and it is still into life. And in 2011, Central Bank issued another circular relating to some improvements of ICCS procedures. Uh, the main features are this, number one, checks presented to the banks are cleared or rejected electronically. Draw bank has to clear the check in the system if there is available balance and there is no other reason to return the check. Check can be rejected by the receiving bank by selecting a reason from the pick list provided by the central bank. So in, within the system, there is a pick list and there are 35 reasons available in the pick list. The receiving bank must select the correct reasons. So, so there are many reasons like amount in figure and words not matching, signatures not matching, signature is not there, or check is altered without additional signatures, date is not correct, it is post-dated check, or check seems to be a forced check, so any reasons. Or checks now according to the standard check, which is prescribed check. So all these reasons are available in the list of 35 reasons, which bank has to click correctly. Central bank is emphasizing this. The presenting bank has to disclose the reason given by the drawing bank to the holder of the check. The drawing has various options under the law to claim his or her amount, as we have seen in previous slides. The banks are required to report return checks in periodic returns which central bank has introduced. Uh, I'll take another two, three minutes, minutes to describe this process, how it works. Normally, currently, generally, banks are not accepting the checks at counter. Very few banks are accepting. What they have advised customers to deposit the checks through their ATM. So customers goes to the ATM and deposit the check. From their ATMs, they collect the checks. They send to a centralized department, who is a specialized department, to see uh, the validity of the checks, that there is no shortcoming in the checks. Then they, is, they put a stamp on the back of the check, that original seal, and they undertake to present this check on behalf of the customer. They scan the front side and back side, and they put it into the central bank system. And through clearing, they send to the central bank. And central bank sent to the another, another bank. So another bank, receiving bank checks it. And in between, central bank, the banks, what they are doing, when a customer deposit a check in the ATM, banks are sending an SMS to the customer saying that we have received your check number so and so for this amount and we will send to the central bank in due time. This sort of message comes. So there are some uh, time requirements uh, which, which bank has to uh, oblige. So banks send that, and when the bank send, some of the banks even send SMS to the pay that we have processed your uh, check for, this, for the clearing. So once the check is cleared or returned, so so the, the pay get another SMS saying your check is cleared and your account is credited or your check is rejected. So then pay can uh, go either to police or to bank and take certificate and, and start this, this proceeding. So this, this is how this system electronically works. Now, after hearing Omar on, on legal issues and uh, after looking all these regulations of central bank and central bank requirements. Uh, we have to see that what risks we are facing as bank customer or as committee member, what we should do. Uh, should we not use check? No, it's some impossible. We have to use the checks. So, 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 so we, sh we should do some sort of self-assessment uh, as, as the community member to what extent we should use the check. 
So I have placed three questions on the next slide. Who is asking checks without name, by name, undated, or post dated as security? So I've listed a few examples where we are compelled to issue checks. First of all, we should not and we must not issue a check without names. There must be a name of beneficiary. So these are the examples where we are compelled to issue security. Credit card security. When we get a credit card from a bank or a finance company, they asked us to give this check undated or post dated and for the full amount of the credit limit they allow. Personal loans or car loans or home finance loans. So either we have to issue installment checks or, or, or one check of the total amount. Landlords are also asking for the um, rent, uh, rent um, either one check or two checks, three checks, four checks. So we are compelled to issue those checks. Wholesaler suppliers, they are also asking if they are giving credit to the retailers and other business business entities. So they are also asking as security checks. And sometimes these checks are blank, uh, are without names and they circulate in, in their uh, local market. Person to person loan, sometimes a borrower who is need, in need of money, he goes to in fact, his friend, he said that I need 20,000, I'll pay you after one month. And to convince the uh, his friend, what he does, he said, I'm ready to give you a check. So, so, so if I don't pay you after one month, you can uh, present this check to the bank. Advanced payment security check, for example, for buying real estate, sometimes brokers ask buyer to issue this check uh, to show the seriousness of the buyers in buying that real estate. So sometimes they ask a certified check or sometimes they accept personal check also. There may be some other reasons. The, the, the question here is that we, we, we cannot avoid issuing these checks, but we have to be careful. We have to assess the risk. If we are using credit card, so we have to meet the obligations of credit card, whatever amount is due monthly, we have to pay. Same applies to the personal loan, car loan and home finance installments, uh, rental checks and other things. Then do we need to use checks for any other purpose? We have to ask question ourselves. If the answer is no, then we should keep our checkbook in a lock. We should not touch it. If answer is yes, then we should go to the third question. Can't we use other forms of payments like standing instructions to the bank? That we give instructions to the bank that every month this, this day you transfer this amount to certain beneficiary or payment through internet banking, telephone banking, mobile apps, or branch banking, going to the branch or other, etc. So, so this way we can avoid this risk of having problem of um, going into a bounce check dilemma. So, so, so this is some sort of thought I'm giving uh, for the listeners. So with this, that I will end my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sahib. Thank you so much for you have comprehensively explained about the bounce and return check and the central bank UA regulation in respect of the check. I must uh, comment on the central bank time to time making regulation to control this issuance of check and frequency of return check, especially the thing which is when they are going to record in the Itaha department all the Itahad Bureau or the return check. This will help other bankers to be alarmed not to accept uh, the checks. And also the image check clearing system, which has completely changed because before they take more than two days or more days to clear. Now it can be done immediately. And it was immediately known that the check has been returned or been honored. Um, we comment really on the central bank every time looking for uh, betterment of the financial instruments in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, thank you, Brother Saba. Now I would like to invite Mr. Ziaz Saloom from Saloom and Partners 
as I said, Dia Saloom is a legal advisor and arbitrator working with Saloom and partners since 2006. He is not only on the checks, he is expert on many legal departments and he has uh, uh, many webinars on the subjects and uh, we are very proud to have him here in our as a speaker and we are looking for, for his comments on this, on the bound checks. Mr. Zia Saloum. Thank you very much, Dr. Kaiser. Thank you very much for the kind introduction as well. And um, a big thank you to the Pakistan Business Council for uh, having me on today. And I'd like to also thank my uh, co-panelists for, for their very informative presentations. Uh, I think they've covered the vast majority of stuff. So I'll try and um, keep my comments uh, brief and I'll try and take a step back and basically take a look at things maybe from a, from a, a wider picture. Um, as we've heard, uh, checks are essentially a payment instrument and that it's key for the business community, if you like, to preserve the importance of checks as a means for settlement. So in fact, indeed, checks have numerous advantages and to, to name a few, you've got the convenience instead of carrying wads of cash around, you can just prepare your check uh, free of errors and, uh, and, and present it. It can, you can endorse the check in favor of third parties. So uh, on some, some of them at least, you have a, a measure of security. If you wish to, you know, like bar a check to make sure that it only goes into the bank account of the designated recipient and so on and so forth. Not to mention the ease of use for businesses uh, who wish to trace expenses and record transactions on the accounting side, the back office side, but there is an, it's, it's arguable that uh, checks are not currently being used fully as intended. Now, I guess it's difficult to confirm the percentages here, but it's, it's very clear that a substantial number are being used to guarantee an obligation and not to make a payment. Um, so whether it's for the purchase of, a, of goods or the settlement of disputes, uh, sorry, settlement of services and so on. So to add to this, you have a system that's now been overwhelmed, uh, particularly maybe of, uh, in the last few years. There are many cases that are in front of the police. Complaints take a lot of time to resolve through the criminal system uh, or even through the civil court. Sometimes, uh, you know, disputes traditionally could take uh, some, some months, if not, uh, if not longer. Uh, so, and it's probably in a sense to reduce some of the burden on the criminal system that you've started to see over the last couple of years, some of the orders that came out in Dubai and in Abu Dhabi, which allow the prosecution uh, or the, the, the prosecutor to issue uh, orders with fines for, uh, for checks that are within certain ranges. Um, so an answer to some of these problems might be uh, decriminalization, quote unquote. So that could reduce the use uh, of checks as a method for guarantees of payments through fear. Uh, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, I'm going to deposit the check and you'll land in jail, that sort of thing. It, decriminalizing would allow traders who to stay out of jail, to continue working, to pay off their debtors. Um, and it would could serve significantly to reduce pressure on the penal system. But then you have two key issues that would face stakeholders when you when you go through this. The question is how do you decriminalize a bounced check without shaking or even better, while reinvigorating the business community's trust in the check as a payment instrument. And that's a fine line to, you know, that's a very fine line and it's a very difficult balance to achieve. And it seems to be the key objectives of the new legislation. So basically law 14 of 2020, uh, which amended the commercial transaction, some of the provisions of the commercial transactions law and in particular, the ones that deal with, with uh, checks that um, uh, you know, Mr. Omar uh, explained to us uh, earlier, earlier in, in the session. So, and, and the, the key there is, well, they've, they've seemed to have gone for a so-called decriminalization to an extent. You've got fines obviously for, for uh, uh, and harsh ones for those who wish to seek to abuse the system. So, for example, people who sign checks uh, like Article 641, Q Swatter, I think it's been translated this way, 
for those who sign a check knowing that uh, their account has been closed years ago, right? They've retained an old checkbook and they sign off a check and they use that. So those are still, those types of things are still going to be penalized and criminalized. Um, but they've also introduced the other side, which is the speed uh, of, of uh, enforcement. It now allows, or it will allow in January of 2022, pretty much direct enforcement of bounce checks uh, before the uh, courts of execution, most like. Now we'll have to see obviously how that's gonna play out in practice back then, but at that time, but we, like uh, so Omar mentioned earlier, we, we've seen some of the changes already as they've come in for um, for um, the uh, ten tenancy contracts and those how those are being treated now with direct avenues for enforcement. So it would seem that the law is going towards the bolstering of the trust in the check as a payment in, as a mode for payment, and we can see this in a number of articles there. So um, uh, so. For example, well, we've heard about the forgery. We've heard, uh, and I've just spoken about the person who, who signs a check without um, uh, knowing that his account has been closed for ages and so on and so forth. Uh, you've got the use of checks in terrorist purposes that, is, that carries now a life sentence plus a fine and a, a few other items in there. You've got uh, prohibitions on the conduct of business. If a person has been doing this on a regular basis, then they may be stopped from conducting a business activity for a period of time. So that obviously would be very important to build up trust in, in, uh, in the system as well. And that's not just applicable to an individual who does this, but you also have the similar provisions that talk about uh, holding a license or basically locking the license of an entity, a business entity, if it does something similar as well, uh, or, you know, if, if that is repeated uh, and taken a bit too far, then the courts also have the possibility of um, completely deregistering the entity in question. So you've got a lot of provisions now in the law, arguably some of these already existed, some of them. So for instance, you have some provisions that were designed to shame or at least serve as a warning to other people where uh, under the prior law, that's going to now be removed. Uh, you had articles that would allow the courts to publish at the convicted person's expense in numerous in uh, newspapers the fact that they've been convicted of um, of a crime involving a bounce check. So that's those sorts of provisions have been retained. They've been now they've included Arabic and English electronic publications, not just written publications. Um, so far, I don't, you know, until now, I've not, I don't recall coming across any circumstance where the court has actually ordered the publication, but maybe we can see this changing as uh, w with the new law. So it's it's an interesting one. I'd, I am really looking forward to seeing how this this plays out in practice. And I think though that you've that the the new law has set the stage to try and address some of these two core issues, decriminalizing to an extent without, without shaking up the trust in, in checks and reducing perhaps some of the reliance on checks as a, as a, as a guarantee rather than as a payment instrument. Um, I think those are my two cents for whatever they're worth and I'm happy to take questions. Uh, and I'll leave it back to you, Dr. Kaiser. Thank you so much. I think you very nicely summarized it that they are, the new law is helping to decriminalize and also what is the answer to the trust in check. Uh, I appreciate for this and this is true. This is a purpose. Just uh, they want to continue with the uh, checks uh, transaction but side by side. Um, they don't want to penalize. So they have to look that the trust in check should there should be there and uh, should not be go scot free. Um, I really appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Ziad for your analysis. There are a few questions. If you can attend that, there are two questions are there. If both Mr. Ziad and Umar, there are two questions are there. 
Would you please discuss the implication of the bounce check for rent, which happened for two consecutive uh, periods? Thanks. So who will I'll take up this? I'll defer to Mr. Omar on that one. Yeah, so uh, for uh, the implication of a bounce check for rent, which happened for two consecutive periods, I'm not sure of uh, the purpose or the meaning. If you're asking if there is a check for uh, the rent of uh, May, for example, uh, that bounces, and then another check in July that bounces, it wouldn't make a difference. Uh, once the first check bounces, um, the landlord can file uh, a case right away. And uh, with the notice as well, it comes into a civil aspect in the rental dispute that uh, can get an order to vacate the uh, premises and to uh, uh, ask for the full amount. Yeah, I, I, I would yeah. agree with the- uh, And generally Omar. again, not paid. So yeah, it's a I two would, separate check. A two I would separate add one. Check, September not paid and then January. So it, it seems to me, that the landlord received the check. So he has been returned the first and the second is still the tenants continue staying there. So that's a question. I think they have to go to the uh, court of the um, uh, rent court. They should report so, there. So we, uh, yes, and to answer the second that we can file a case on the first rejection. Just one check that bounces, you file uh, uh, an action right away. I should not wait for the second check happen. Then that's your, uh, I think, announcement. Uh, uh, you have, uh, you have, if you wait, there is always a risk, especially with individuals, always landlords, they, uh, if they, uh, um, a check get bounces, they fear that uh, this uh, person might not have money, might leave the country, um, especially with individuals. Um, yeah. It's different maybe when you're dealing with companies. Yeah, of course yeah. it is. Uh, maybe with companies, I have more security. Uh, and for yeah. yeah, I would add, I would add yeah. there that if you, um, if you've, if you've got multiple checks that have bounced and they're all related, they've all been issued by the same party and relate to the same subject matter. So the same contract. Um, if you file a complaint, let's say a police complaint, in, in respect of those, they'll be treated as a single crime, not two separate crimes, one for each check that you've got. Um, okay. That would be the and then again, uh, I think the question again comes in. So, which court should uh, he should go? Uh, should go to the police, or he should go to the where? You, you, uh, Dr. Kaiser, you always have two options. So uh, a, a bounce check gives two liabilities. It gives a criminal liability and it gives a civil liability. For the criminal one, you go to the police and you exhaust the criminal route and everyone uh, try to uh, uh, start with this route first because it uh, imposes a lot of pressure on the issuer. He can get arrested. Uh, it's less less cost and faster with the aim that maybe I will impose pressure through the police and maybe he will pay the amount of the check. Then you have this civil uh, route, which is to retrieve the amount of the check. This is by filing a civil case uh, or uh, an order for payment or going to the rental uh, committee uh, for uh, if it really if the dispute relates to rent and claim for the amount based on the lease contract and of course you provide that the check was bound as part of your evidence and as uh, Mr. Ziet uh, duly noted if the transaction uh, if the checks multiple checks were issued under one transaction the uh, police will treat it as one uh, the idea that uh, why then should I wait? Sometimes they want to wait so you can put all the bounce checks uh, in the criminal complaint yeah, because later there would be a judgment or a decision issued noting that those checks were bounced, which makes it easier when explaining to the civil court those amount, uh, th this amount is due. But nothing prevents from 
uh, explaining this uh, or doing this exercise before the civil court by just showing that uh, the bounce receipt or advice slipped from the bank. Yeah, nicely expressed. Uh, I, 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 the, the situation is that the, when the first check is bounced, it should go immediately to the police and take action. Don't wait till you assemble all the, collect all the checks. That's not the right strategy. And second thing, uh, uh, is asking the validity of, uh, of, the, of the dishonored check. Of course, when they, you issue the check, so you will, you will deposit the date of the, when it is uh, due. So if it is returned, so sure, uh, you go and state report to the police, allow seven days or 10 days, that's what they're saying. You don't have to wait. So it is not stale. Uh, if it is more than six months, this will become uh, stale check. Mm -hmm. Mr. Badar, you want to comment? Uh, I think as per law, uh, the pay of the check have two years to, uh, to, to process case against the drawer. So this, uh, somewhere in the law it is mentioned. Umar, can you explain it further? It's, uh, yes, that's called the time bar. Time bar, it's uh, actually uh, the bounce check, it's a misdemeanor. And misdemeanors, they have a time bar of five years. So if you have a, a check that bounced, uh, you only have five years before you can commence with a criminal complaint. That's a, that's a good information. So the check has a life of five years uh, till that, otherwise it becomes like a paper, piece of paper. Yes, the more significant uh, period is uh, one that's covered under the central bank, which is six months, where you have to deposit the check uh, to the bank from its due date. So let's say, uh, the check is due on 1st of Jan 2020. You have to submit it to the bank uh, before the lapse of six months because there is a risk that the bank would not accept uh, giving you a slip or in cashing it. So uh, an important tip, you have to submit it uh, as soon as possible after its due date. Yeah. So the uh, first step is the police station. Now coming to the second question. Uh, uh, okay, there's no... Uh, second question, I think. So uh, with that, I think we are over with the time also. But uh, I again here uh, thank, uh, uh, before I close, I have some few suggestions to the audience. And this will go to the Facebook and, and also on YouTube for, because everyone has a timing and then it, everyone can look at how about the bounce check. Uh, suggestion is this, avoid Issuing checks. Think 10 times when you want to issue the check. Make it sure. And uh, you can should know about the consequences. Uh, this bounce check has, has disrupted many businesses, disrupted many people's life. So before they are happy to have a credit card and nicely issue, I will caution everyone if you do the credit card and you say the balance payment, they will say a uh, very small amount, but they are charging heavily interest, which is more than 30%. One should caution that they, when they use the credit card, they should immediately settle it before they do the whole amount to avoid any extra amount payment. And uh, always try to honor your commitment and be in limitation uh, credit card is like an open, uh, what I always say, sword to you for your life. Similarly, when you issue check for uh, uh, rent, make sure that you have that fund. Third, when you buy the car, make sure you have the fund because this is all are the uh, obligation you're signing. It looks very good. I know one car seller telling me that the buyer is looking I on the key, when he get the key and that time he can si get it signed, any document for them. And they sign it. And the terms are very, you have to be very careful from the terms they put it to you for all the situation. This is a few suggestions. And with that, I thank Mr. Marco there for all his mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Kaiser, if I can add one, just one thing, that um, it, it all depends that you need to assess which side uh, uh, you are in. 
So uh, if you are the landlord and you have um, a tenant uh, that issued the checks, of course, the if you come to me, I will recommend to you that you file a criminal case so you can impose pressure on the tenant to make the payment. And uh, to answer the question, you go to the rental committee for eviction. You don't go to the police for the eviction, you go to the rental committee. On the other hand, if I am the, uh, advising the tenant who issued the check and it got down, so I would tell him that he should settle this immediately with the landlord and work on a payment of the value of the bounce check by wire transfer and evidence this receipt. So this matter is settled. And even if uh, for any reason he was traveling and he got to know, unfortunately, that a criminal case was filed against him, immediately he offers to make the payment of the value of the check and the criminal case would be dropped. Okay, that's a good... Uh, I agree. Uh, uh, that's a good strategy. Uh, good guidance to the participant and for future who can view our... Uh, uh, this uh, about check webinar. Uh, thank you, Omar, again, and thank you, your company, Tamimi Law Firm, is one of the leading company. Thank you, Madhusudan Sab. Thank you so much for your very comprehensive and detailed presentation on the uh, checks, especially from the central bank. It's a quite a guidance, and it can be kept for future references always. And we expect that future laws. It, uh, Central Bank is so much vigilant, I think things will be more healthy with the Tahad Bureau, Bureau working. But sometimes, like we see some companies leaving from Dubai, still with a huge loan. And then I say, where the Tahad Bureau was at that time, when so much amount is there. Maybe there's something there. But I am sure on this. And again, thank you, Badru Zama Saab, and thank you, Mr. Ziyad Samin, uh, for your uh, deliberation here, and we are looking for more topic related to finance and related to the legal thing. And we are here thank to American Chamber, AmCham especially, and their members and their, their guests, Canadian Business Council. Thank you for to them for participating in the Abu Dhabi Chamber, who are the chief of our all the councils here. We are thankful for all their cooperation. They are always very cooperative and uh, my dear participant uh, for joining this. Thank you so much. Have a great evening and great day. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.